हरि ओम तत्सत वेलकम टू ज्योतिर्मयानंद सोसाइटी आर जर्नी टू सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब आर चैनल फॉर द मिस्टिकल मीनिंग ऑफ द स्क्रिप्चर्स एंड टू एंजॉय डेली सत्संग विद अस वी आर करेंटली स्टडीइंग द बुक द मिस्ट्री ऑफ द सोल कथा उपनिषद ऑथर्ड बाय स्वामी ज्योतिर्मयानंद जी महाराज नरेटेड बाय माय सेल्फ स्वामी निखिलानंद so we are on chapter 1 section 2 mantra number 19 and the wisdom continues to be imparted by the lord of death yama to nachiketa who is an ideal disciple if anyone thinks that he is able to kill or that he has killed by any then he does not know because the self neither kills nor can be killed you may remember the same shloka is also in the bhagavad gita this mantra shows that the self is beyond all egoistic values it is because of one's identification with the mental life that one feels i am the doer i am the performer of this deed i am the enjoyer i am the experiencer but this feeling is based upon error your little ego is essenceless and powerless it assumes power and significance from the supreme self because of ignorance pertaining to the nature of the supreme self one remains glued to egoistic life one considers oneself a perishable personality one is afraid of being killed one feels proud of having caused harm to others in fact all actions proceed from the supreme and are sustained by the divine plan knowing this one should surrender one's ego to the divine will mantra number 20 the self that resides in the heart of the individual soul is subtler than the subtlest greater than the greatest by the grace of god only those who are desireless and griefless attain the realization of the self the supreme self is the subtlest because unless one purifies one's intellect through inquiry and meditation the self cannot be realized it is the greatest because one who realizes the self becomes all that exists the self is the basis of this universe it is infinite and eternal time and space are like ripples in the vast ocean of unbounded bliss one has fewer desires and little room for grief if he turns away from the impulses of the lower self and moves towards a life of in- internal integration and acquires purity of heart and control over the senses such a soul receives the grace of god in the form of burning aspiration for self realization god is your inner being when you live a life of truth and purity you receive the grace of your own inner self thus aided by your own aspiration you move towards the attainment of liberation mantra 21 though seated it goes far though sleeping it moves on all sides who else but me can know that god who is full of glory lord yama continues describing the nature of the self from the point of view of truth the self neither sleeps nor sits nor moves the self is immutable all pervading and absolute but from the relative point of view with reference to the senses and mind of man the self is spoken of as having characteristics of movement etc the self is beyond the range of mind all human thoughts and experiences are encompassed by the mind and senses therefore the description of the self baffles human reason and mentation a knower of the self alone can enable an aspirant to understand the true implications 
of the apparently paradoxical statements of Vedantic philosophy concerning the nature of the self. Mantra number 22. Though bodiless, the self abides in all bodies. It is great and all pervading. One who knows the self conquers grief. There are three bodies, physical, astral and causal. Physical body is the body of flesh and bones. It is the physical organism. Astral body consists of the pranas or the vital forces, senses, subtle organs of action, mind, intellect, ego and subconscious mind. Causal body consists of avidya, ignorance, which acts as a veil, hiding the true nature of the self. It is the causal body that stores the karmas of innumerable births in the form of subtle impressions. Astral body supports and abides in the physical body. Causal body supports the astral body and abides in it. But beyond the causal body is the self, which supports the causal body and abides in it. Thus the self abides in all the bodies of all beings. But this form of abiding does not limit the glory of the self. One who realizes the self through an intuitive mind goes beyond all sorrows and griefs. Mantra number 23 the self is not acquired by intellect, nor by listening to various scriptures, nor by various discourses. He alone acquires the self who has been chosen by the self. Then the self reveals its true nature for him. How beautiful is this statement? Meaning... The self has to choose us. The self is the intrinsic fact of life and existence. It cannot be realized through any objective method because every effort implies a movement of the mind away from one's being. Intellect is limited. Therefore, it cannot grasp the nature of the self fully, nor can it experience the fullness of the self. One should allow oneself to be chosen by the self. This does not mean that one is controlled and limited by some external agency in one's movement towards self-realization. The self in man is the innermost truth of his life. Therefore, to enable oneself to be chosen by the innermost self implies to pursue the path of virtue, the path of purity, that puts one in contact with the deepest in him, his core. He who is endowed with discrimination, dispassion, control of mind and senses, and burning aspiration for self-realization is indeed chosen by the self. But one who is not endowed with these qualities cannot realize the self. This is explained in the next mantra, Mantra number 24. This self cannot be acquired by one who has not turned away from evil conduct, nor by one who is restless, nor by one who has no control over his senses and mind, and whose mind is lacking peace. Even though endowed with a powerful intellect, he cannot realize the self. The mere development of intellectual capacity is not enough. The intellectual development enables one to acquire knowledge pertaining to the relative world. It enables one to be a scholar or a professor or adept in some science or art, but it cannot lead to self-realization. One must be endowed with an intellect that is free from the pressure of subconscious complexes, an intellect that has been rendered subtle and intuitive by the practice of meditation and inquiry. It is such an intellect alone that can lead one to self-realization. One must be endowed with peace and harmony within oneself in order to realize the self. 
all vices must be properly removed by the force of dispassion and understanding. So with this we conclude our satsang for today. I will see you in tomorrow's satsang. Hari Om Tatsat. Stay blessed and meditate if you feel like. These mantras are extremely profound. Hari Om.